Alright, let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I had a few messages I had prepared just in case, you know, ready to preach, and just in case the pastor decided he'd ask me to preach. And this is not a single one of those. The Lord was leading me up elsewhere this morning in my devotions to all this passage, reminding me of something I've been teaching my teens when I was so in the teen class. The Lord said, I want you to talk about this. He wants you to preach, this is what it'll be. So read. Matthew, or 2 Timothy 2. Look at verse 11. It is a faithful saying. How often does the Lord say that in his word? <laughs> not very. He does not often say it. It is a faithful saying. So we better look at this and see what in the world is the Lord saying is a faithful saying. Why, do, why is he trying to divert our attention straight to this? It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet the Lord abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself with prayer. The Lord, I ask you to help us focus and see why you said this is a faithful saying, what you have to hear that you're trying to speak to us through. And tell us as it, well, I don't know why you put this sermon on my heart this morning. Besides that I needed it. There's probably someone else here, all of us here, we need to see and divert our attention to see what you have for us today. Please speak to us. Work on our hearts. Pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> A lot of this does not make sense. If you think of it, we'll, we'll think of it first from the earthly perspective. If we be dead, we shall live. Does that make sense? <laughs> if we suffer, we're going to be rulers and reign. Does that make sense? Now this one does make sense. If we deny him, he'll deny us. We, that, that makes sense. We do that all the time. We, we can do that. If someone denies us, we'll deny them. If we believe not, the Lord abides faithful. He will not deny us. Amen. That's what he says. So we'll start, we'll start there at the top. It says, if we be dead with him, what does it mean to be dead with Christ? What has he told us? Well, look, Romans 6. Turn to Romans 6. We'll, we'll come right back to 2 Timothy. We'll turn to Romans 6. Faithful saying, be dead with Christ, be 
also shall live with him. Have we put off that old man? Have we put, are we dead to sin? We preaching earlier. Our anger. Have we tried to leave the anger? Have we given ourselves? Uh, do we control our spirit? Are we focused on things of this earth? Or are we focused on things of God? Ephesians 4.22 tells us that concerning, or that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is crucif which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then they put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Are we putting on the new man? Do we put on the Are we dead? To sin, dead to our old, old lives. Are we dead with Christ? <clears throat> Christ died on the cross for us. Amen. Are we dead with Christ? Have we put Christ died on the cross? He died paying the debt for our sins. Our sin, if we trust in Christ, our Lord and the Savior, our sin has been crucified with Christ. Is dead. We're going to put that off. And be renewed in the spirit of mind and live with Christ. What are we going to do? But as a lot of you know, once we're saved, does that mean life is just an easy breeze and we have nothing to worry about? Everything's going to go perfectly? That's not the way it works. That's why he doesn't stop there. He says, you go back to 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy, chapter 2. The rest of that phrase there. If we suffer, we also shall reign with him. There's multiple examples in Scripture of people suffering for Christ. Multiple examples even after, after the apostles, people suffering for Christ. 1 Peter 1, or 1 Peter 3. 14, 15 says, but if, but, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. If we're yeah. happy to suffer, this is just, are you just looking forward to the next time you get to suffer? You're going to, ah, oh, I can go suffer, it's going to be so rough, miserable, you're getting so excited about it. I'm sure Clarissa does it all the time. She says excited about the next time she gets to suffer. Is that how it works? 1 Peter 3, 14 says, Be suffer for righteousness' sake. Happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terror, neither be ye troubled. Verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Suffering is going to come. If we are serving Christ the way we are supposed to, suffering in one form or another will come. It may be persecution, it may be some, some physical health issues going to come, either to you or to a friend, family member. Suffering will come, but we can still rest in peace and be happy in Christ because we know He's in control. You see in James, the trying of your faith work of patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, one thing that is not an extra. That's what we have to live for. We don't have to worry about the health problems coming. We don't have to worry about even spiritual battles coming because we know if we put a trust in Christ, if we suffer, we also shall reign with Him. But it doesn't stop there. The end of verse 12 of 2 Peter 2. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Does that sound a little scary? Do you want God to deny you? Let's look a little deeper. Another scripture, 1 John 1. 1 John 1, we all know verse verse 9, but we're going to read the, the context around that a little bit. 
While you're turning there, I'm going to read Psalm 66. Psalm 66, 18. If you regard iniquity in my heart, or if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If we're regarding iniquity in our heart, as mentioned earlier today, actually I think it was, this was a sermon I heard yesterday. We were, we were at a uh, youth rally yesterday. And uh, Brother Reed was saying, growing up, he constantly, he had hidden sin in his life. He had hidden sin. He was trying to hide sin from other people. But you know what? God saw it and God gave him a miserable childhood. What he said because of that. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We deny Christ if we're hiding sin in our lives. If we, are, if we say, I know the Lord doesn't want this, me to do this, I know the Lord wants me to do this, whatever it is. I'm, and you say, but uh, the opposite sounds a whole lot better. It just makes a lot more sense to me, so that's what I'm going to do. You are denying Christ. If you deny him, he also will deny you. He's not going to listen to your prayers because you're not, you're not listening to him. He's not going to shower you with blessings because you're not listening to him. He's, probably, he's still a merciful guy who will give you more blessings than you deserve. But it won't be those showers of blessings. But just do a little spring. Hey, you still get free. You still get walk. Do we want the showers of blessings? If we deny him, he also will deny us. First John 1 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, that we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Admit it. We're sinners. We still sin. There's still things we can do to improve ourselves to be more like Christ. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We have a sort of merciful God. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not a little bit of it. He's going to cleanse us from all. And if we confess our sins. That's admit you've done wrong and turn from it. And He'll keep showing you how you can become more and more like Him. And He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned. We make him a liar. His word is not in us. But he doesn't stop there in Second Timothy. Not only does he say he be dead with him, he shall live with him. That, which is, sounds exciting. We want, we want to live with Christ. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. We want to reign with Christ. Who does not want to reign with Christ? No, we want to reign with Christ. We're looking forward to those rewards that are coming our way. That he will shower away. But then he says, if you deny him, he also will deny you. The more we deny Christ, the less blessing, the less he'll do for us. Because we're denying him. It didn't stop there. If we believe not, If he abides in faith, thank God for that. He cannot deny himself. He doesn't say will not, he says cannot. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy was written to a pastor. To Pastor Timothy. And written to his church. But look at this. He's writing to Christians. People who have trusted Christ their Lord and Savior. Who have believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved. He says, if you believe not. Anyone here know a Christian who seemed like he really knew what he was saying and doing when he trusted Christ as if he trusted Christ as Savior? Anyone know someone like that? But now, he's living the way of the world. does not seem to believe on the name of the Son of God anymore. A lot of people say, was he even really saved? Or he probably wasn't even really saved. Or some people say he lost his salvation. 